Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of M Crater Lore. So today what we're going to be working on is finishing up that grass mechanic for the hay and stuff. I wanted to make a couple sickles and um, basically allow us to use that item for making the uh, grass to be harvested and stuff like that. So just kind of like something that I wanted to do. I'm not sure how it's going to affect uh, the drops for the grass or anything like that. We might have to play around with that in the future video. But I was looking at how this was set up and I'm like, okay, that could probably be turned into a sickle easily. So um, I just wanted to kind of experiment with the, the lines and stuff like that. And once I got the general idea of what I needed to do, I decided to just copy the pickaxe head over to the actual um, uh, workspace and or I actually I think I just ended up uh, re editing this a little bit and I just started moving it a little bit to the side here just so I had uh, a general idea of what needed to be done and once I did that then I could basically go ahead and kind of branch out the um, the stick part so it was kind of like in you know general location for the stick and after I worked on that I just wanted to kind of give it an angle a little bit so it looks like there's actually a handle and not just a straight stick so that's basically what I went with and it looks very similar to a sickle actually so and then I just needed to fill in the color for the stick and get the um, exact colors that I used for that. You might have noticed that this is a different type of pickaxe and uh, color scheme. This is uh, basically just a little project that I've been working on uh, for making um, basically like custom tools that can be um, kind of branched into uh, like when you when a tool breaks, it gives you back the uh, tool handle and you can just replace the tool head which is a little bit kind of cheaper i guess <laughs> i don't know but um not by like a huge amount but it's still a pretty cool mechanic because then you can you know end up using it now i also wanted to make the um phosphorite uh basically tool as well so i ended up retexturing the one that we had here and uh, basically just added the other um, colors for that particular one just so it was all set up for that road as well and I needed the ones for the sticks as well so um, I ended up texturing that. I'm, I haven't implemented it just yet but uh, I have other things on my plans to get started for the lower series after we get this part done so um, it's one of these things that I've been wanting to do for a while, but there's other th big projects that I wanted to get to and just that popped up and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to get this one out. So, yeah, it basically looks like a sickle, like a really fancy sickle and stuff like that, which is really good. Um, now, when it comes to the grass seed, I still need to consider if we can't get the grass seed anymore then what I'm going to have to do is make some wild plants, which um, isn't a bad idea, actually. So uh, basically what wild plants would allow us to do is it would allow us to get seeds from these plants, which we could then plant from in our garden and stuff. And obviously our seeds will reproduce uh, once we have more of these plants, right? So um, maybe we can also make them generate... Um, some text like some overtime uh in the biome we could have a lower uh rate for them to generate i think that might be an idea that we could end up doing maybe i don't know we'll see how it turns out uh, again it all uh lays on the actual plant itself now what i've been basically doing is i'm updating the textures that i made for the the heads for the actual uh pickaxes sickles um, the shovels, all those, all those things are basically, basically overriding these textures. So it looks more like the tool heads themselves. So that's basically what I've been doing with this part. Um, now in the future, I want to add a whole bunch of other tools. Now this is just the, the, the cream one is the stone tool set, but it also has the, um, perif, um, 
basic uh, wood type. So basically it has the wood type for that particular stick. And um, basically what will happen is when you combine those two different resources together, you'll be able to get a tool itself, which is a really cool concept. I'm pretty sure it's been done before, but um, it's still something that would be a little bit interesting. It takes a little bit more time to do because you have to make all the different parts and stuff, but it's um, not a bad idea. So I wanted to also make a uh, table, crafting table for it, and that will take a lot of um, systems that we still need to end up creating. I wanted to create a kind of like a recipe book system that we can actually look up recipes and stuff. Uh, that will take a little bit more time to do. Um, I have to look in one of my mods how I did it before, but it shouldn't be too hard to do. I don't remember it being too hard. It's just a matter of setting up a additional I inventory for that particular thing. So the next thing that I needed to do was add the texture um, textures to the M crater and set up the uh, items and tools for the sickle parts. So basically we have uh, those and I needed to import the sickle head as well. And then I wanted to import the other tool for the philosopher ph phosphorate. Um, actual sickle. We didn't set up the phosphate sickle just yet because I'm going to have to create a whole bunch of different recipes and stuff and then I still need to figure out a recipe or something to craft up the uh, crafting table for the tools which will be really important. So uh, we're going to need something to do with that. So I have to figure out what the best idea for that particular recipe system would be. We might just make a crafting tables recipe and um, or block or something like that that is designed specifically to craft like crafting table stuff and hopefully that would be a good start or something like that. Then we don't have to be dependent on the Minecraft recipes at all and we have a little bit more freedom of how we create things as well as have a custom block to do that with. But um, overall, that's basically about what I'm doing. I'm just setting up the um, textures and the items. Now, I had to figure out what I wanted to put this particular tool under because it's not really any of the other tools. And I did notice there was a shield, um, uh, what do you call it, block base in there as well. So I might end up seeing if I can't make something like that. But I'm not sure how it all works yet, so uh, no promises. Uh, so yeah, basically I wanted to get the items in and then I needed to navigate to the uh, block itself. And I realized that it wasn't under the block uh, tab for crafting. It was under actually under the GUI. So I needed to go find the GUI. There's a lot of um, trying to find stuff in this today because I haven't worked on it for a while. And I mean, I only really work on it for once a week or whatever, right? So I have to try to remember where everything is. It's pretty organized compared to CCTV craft, which is like really good. But um, these are all the basic recipes that I have for the tool heads. And I needed to create another one for the sickle one. So I could basically get that set up. Now, each one of those has to do with the slot detection and... Um, Basically, I needed to create an, a unique recipe from those to allow me to craft up the sickle itself. So uh, basically, I needed to kind of figure out what was going on with these ones, and I needed to remember what the recipes were. I wish there was an easy way to um, kind of show what the recipe system is, but it's just one of those things that you have to kind of like figure out. Now another thing that I've been working on with this particular crafting recipe system is the durability is based on how many crafting resources there are in that particular recipe. So for example um, I just adjusted the pickaxe so I'm going to have to adjust the uh, durability for how much the pickaxe can support but basically the other um, one down below um, will have more durability for the sickle. So at least that's the idea, at least that I wanted to create with this particular recipe system. And then of course, having different um, wood types and 
material types and stuff like that, you'll be able to uh, customize the durability a little bit more. Uh, for example, you might have harder wood uh, that might be add a little bit more durability. So you might be able to grow that for a specific type of um, handle and then maybe get a little extra, a few extra points for durability or something like that. Now this is the GUI. Um, basically what I needed to do was set up the recipe and that's what I just did. So we can move on to the next thing. And that was basically editing the hay mechanics. I needed to figure out where the mechanics were actually stored. And I wasn't quite sure where the breaking properties were. And I want to make sure that you can actually get the hay and stuff like that from the blocks. And tell you the truth, it was just a nightmare trying to figure out where all these pieces were actually located. And it was right under my nose the entire time. So uh, with this one, basically I um, needed to test for the item uh, that we just created. So I needed to make a tag instead. And I realized that after I added that block. So I needed to go ahead and go into the workspace for the um, or the items procedure and create a tag for that and I just called it uh, Tales of Biomes for the namespace because that's um, what I needed and then I just called it Sickles so basically I can put any Sickles under that particular namespace and then we'll be able to make sure that they work for that particular damage thing so um, that's at least part of the script the other part that I needed was basically somewhere within the workspace and like I said it was like right under my nose the whole time it wasn't actually too far from where I was so um, the other thing that I needed to do was make the um, the actual uh, sickle itself so I needed to create the sickle and basically or I was adding the tag that's what I was doing I needed to make the tag for that and then once I could once I had the tag, then I could just basically go ahead and make a else statement. I realized um, later on, though, that this particular procedure wouldn't work, so I needed to um, revamp the way that it was configured for the condition because right now what it's doing is it's going to cancel out any block being broken um, based on... Um, if the block is not grass, like the, the hay blocks, if it's not a tool, and if the tool isn't breakable. So um, I needed to kind of branch that out into just if it was affected by the grass itself and then test for the other two conditions. So it was a little bit different than I needed to set it up. I wasn't really paying attention when I created this, but... Um, I ended up going back and fixing that issue after I tested in the game and noticed the issue. So uh, I was just adding notes so I knew where everything was. And uh, if anyone uses the project by getting it from GitHub, then they'll be able to um, easily know what all the different components do. So that was something that I wanted to make sure, like I've been trying to add as many notes as possible while I'm creating these procedures and stuff. Um, many things still don't have notes or anything like that, but you know, it's it's good to have notes just so if you do open source your project then people are able to um, know what's going on and stuff like that. So I've been trying to keep up with that. Now one of the things that I wanted to do was basically test uh, some stuff, but you might have noticed I re-edited re the um, the actual sand things here. So the uh, phosphorus uh, crystals, those all generate underwater now. In some cases they go above water, but um, it's really rare that that happens. Um, in some cases it does though, which is a little bit annoying, but it's just the, the, down to how features work, unfortunately. Uh, like this one right here, it popped out of water a little bit, but it's, an, it's mostly underwater, which is great. So this is the crafting table that I needed for crafting up the tools. And you might have noticed there's a whole bunch of new tabs for items and stuff like that. We have a whole bunch of stuff for our blocks. We have, um, what do you call it, um, one for our decorations. And uh, there's one for resources and as well as... Um, 
tools as well. So I'm creating up the tool heads right now. Uh, these are the two uh, heads for the pickaxe and sickle that I needed to figure out how to create the um, the axe and shovel. I couldn't remember how I set that up. <laughs> so I was trying to play around with that. I needed to figure out what was what was the recipe. Eventually I did figure out all the recipes by hand. This is where the recipe book would really be um, handy even if it was just documentation of you know how to create tools and stuff like that and uh, what materials that can be used. It might be able to we might be able to make a book or something out of that. Um, playing around with it. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what what I needed to do, but um, turns out that I needed basically like a, well, a shape like the axe head. So I ended up creating something like this. And I still need to make the recipe shapeless as well. So, well, not really shapeless, but like um, add support for other slot types and stuff like that. Some of this can be easily done but some can't, so um, I'll need to figure out what to do there. So I finally got the axe head, and then I needed the shovel head, which I was pretty sure this was the one, so that should be most of the tools, and then the sword is just like that. So once I did that, I needed to create the, the actual handle, and then I could basically create that from the perif, um wood type, and then I could combine the... Um, tool types like this to make the actual tools. So basically when those tools break, we get the tool stick, the tool handle back. And then what we can do is we can reuse that tool handle for another recipe. So we only really need one of those tools for each one of those uh, tools that we need. Uh, all that we need to replace is the tool head, which is really more realistic overall. So basically I wanted to go into survival and just test if um, this was working and it was working but I don't think it was actually uh, working in the sense that I wanted it to I needed to figure out uh, what was going on with the grass because I needed to test if um, doing it with my hand was possible and I might have done that in the second test I'm not sure but um, yeah this is when I tested with it and I noticed that it wasn't working as I should have. So I need to figure out where the grass mechanics was. And this is actually what caused me to go back into that original script and realize that the uh, thing wasn't working per se how it should have been set up. So I started looking for the entire um, system that we worked on and I did realize at this point that this wasn't set up at the, the way that um, it needed to be, but i um, pretty sure I went back there and fixed that. But I needed to figure out what was like causing the grass to not, um, to basically allow it to work with a hand. And I knew there was a script somewhere around in here that was controlling the grass breaking mechanics, but I couldn't find it. And I was really annoying because I know what was in here. And I remember doing it, but I couldn't remember where I placed it. So I needed to sort through all that. And I was going through all the settings and trying to figure out where it was. I knew it was a global procedure, which made things even worse because um, I needed to locate that. And there wasn't any way to actually connect to that particular thing. So I did disable the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the loot tables for those particular blocks because I didn't want them to um, drop that uh, particular thing until after. And basically I wanted to set up the custom breaking drop properties in this particular script anyways. So basically what I needed to do was test if the item in the main hand had... Um, what do you call it, silk touch, and then I could basically make it drop a specific type of item. If not, then I needed to create um, a condition where uh, it would test if the sickle was in the property. Like, obviously we need, need the sickle either way, but um, I needed to make sure that there was all the requirements for in order to doing it. So if they had silk touch, then it should drop the same item block. If not, then it should drop the resource if it's at the final stage. So I had to cr 
create all this particular stuff with the uh, main hand item. And I just created the silk touch and then tested for that part. And I needed to figure out how to set all that up. So this is where I realized that it needed to be on its own thing for the uh, mechanics there. So for example, I needed to test if they were holding the sickle and then I needed to cancel out if there was no actual item in their main hand. So as you can see, it's already starting to take a different shape of the procedure. And then I wanted to basically, if they were draw, like um, if the, they had the silk touch in their hand, then I needed to apply the drop position. So it was in the center of the block and then I could basically go ahead and grab this and move that one down there. And then we can basically go ahead and drop an else statement in and replace that like so. And basically what we can do here is we can use silk touch on that particular one and we can edit this a little bit more. So we don't really need the dropping mechanics for the resource itself. We just need to add support for silk touch on that one. And then this one, we need the resource for if they don't have silk touch. So that's basically what I did there. And I was just reviewing the code, just to make sure everything was set up properly. It looked fine. So that part's done. And then I got to try to figure out where the actual uh, part is. And this is where I figured out that it was still not working in the, um, with the grass, so I knew there was a separate procedure somewhere. So I just needed to kind of like test these mechanics. So I know that that worked with the, without silk touch and obviously with silk touch, it would drop the block itself. So I just wanted to kind of play around with this and see how it all worked and make sure that it was all set up and stuff. So I was pretty happy with that part. So I just needed to figure out the grass part and once I figured out that part, I can move on to wrapping things up. So I did eventually find it. I ended up searching for it in the, um, for the grass, anything with grass in it. And I did find the procedure that I needed. I needed to test for the silk touch itself. So I just need to call it sickle. And you might've noticed that I have a, a global variable for the namespace. This allows uh, me to, uh, if I decide to update the namespace for the workspace or whatever, then I can always easily quickly update all the um, tag names and things connected to that in procedures uh, through that particular um, what do you call it? The variable for the global variable. So it will automatically update all the tags in the workspace and without me needing to go and locate everything down. So I've been trying to keep up with that as well, which is really important for keeping things consistent. Uh, vice versa. I mean, if anyone else wanted to create their own mod and stuff like that and change the name of the mod, then they could easily update the mod itself as well. So, um, that's kind of why I have it in place. So that's basically working. Now I needed to test a few other things. So if it's broken by that and making sure that when I break it, it will break and not drop anything. So that's basically what I did there. We can still break dirt with it, which is fine, I guess. And Grass isn't dropping per se with it. So I think the seeds will need to be in its own crop plant possibly. And we'll probably end up doing something a little bit different with that. Now I wanted to test all the tools just to make sure that everything was working per se. And uh, then I just started mining out some stuff just to give it a test to see if the material type and everything. Now, I remember that I have to update the um, the the durability for the pickaxe and sickle. So both of these will have different durability based on how much resources are in the crafting recipe. So I need to make sure that um, I go ahead and fix that up before I forget, which I'll probably end up doing off camera just because it takes a little bit of calculation and stuff like that but um, basically testing out the tools just to make sure that, you know, it's reasonable amount of uh, speed to actually mine this out. I think for stone tools, this is pretty good. 
Um, it's pretty much the same as regular stone tools, if I remember correctly. The durability is pretty much the only other thing that's different. So pretty happy with that. And I noticed leaves aren't decaying either. So we're going to need to redesign the entire tree mechanics, I think. Uh, we'll probably have to go back and make sure all these trees are redone. We'll probably have to redesign them, which has been on my to-do list for a while. So we'll probably end up redesigning them a little bit and maybe add some roots in so they kind of go into the ground a little bit as well. So we'll see if we can't do that and make it a little bit more realistic for the generation and stuff. That should help with uh, when they go over cliffs or something like that. They should still have roots and stuff that go over, which might be a nice little addition for it. So yeah, I noticed that the leaves weren't decaying, which we'll have to definitely fix, but um, outside of that, I just basically needed to um, figure some stuff out. Now I noticed that there was, we still needed a hoe to test our hoe out, and I needed to locate some of the, uh, st the what do you call it, the tilled soil or fertile soil, so we could basically test that with. And I have tilled most of it, so I wanted to make sure that we could get a item from that. And we should have gotten that. I don't know if we did or not, because I had those in my inventory. So it might have added it to the stack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and chop down a whole bunch more trees and get some stuff. And we'll see if we can't get the axe to break. But yeah, basically that's um, <clears throat> the one thing that I needed to do was basically test for, make sure the durability is and everything set up. Now, obviously de depending on the material type, the durability will be a little bit different. So I just need to chop a few more of these down and just, just to see if we could get that item back. And I'm pretty sure it did because I think I tested it before, but I can't remember if I did or not could just be my mind playing tricks on me so I wanted to make sure that we do get the stick and pretty sure I set up script for it but yeah we get the stick back perfect all right so we can reuse that stick to create um, another tool later on in that same crafting table that we made so that's pretty much it um, outside of that um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.